Welcome to the new sound of Rockland. Rocklandworldradio.com. Exciting online TV and radio. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I break your concentration? Welcome, Welcome to the new sound of Rockland. 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 World Radio. 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 Com. Com. Exciting. Exciting online TV and radio. radio. Watch and listen to what you've been missing. Broadcasting independent music, art, and culture. From the world of pop to poetry, classical to cutting edge. Movies, comedy, jazz, jams, rock and roll baby, interviews, information, and event listings. Join, join the revolution. It's not just radio, it's Rockland World Radio. RocklandWorldRadio.com Welcome to Dialogues with Dan, heard on Rockland World Radio every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Be sure to check out the archives by clicking on the Archives and Programs button located on the menu bar. And now the host of Dialogues with Dan... Mr. Dan Wintime. Oh, thanks, Richard. Hi, everyone. It's Dan. And tonight, I'm lucky enough to have back Judy Stat, one of my favorite guests from way back. <laughs> way back? Yes. The Interview. The Stone Age. <laughs> Judy Stat. Judy is talented on many levels. She will share some of them tonight. Hello, Judy. Welcome back. Thank you, Dan. My friend. My friend nice to be here yes. with you. Excellent to have you. <laughs> nice locations. Nice new locations. Yes. Jude Richard scooped up this joint. It's great. And smoked it. And here he <laughs> is. Hello, Judy. Yeah. So, Judy, um, we go way back. You've been doing things with me for Excuse me? 10 years. Excuse me? What have um, I been doing with you, Dan? Oh. Yes. Was that one night when I was drinking too much and oh. I forgot? What was I doing with you? Um, You're not going to tell? Um, no. <laughs> well, good. Yeah, we <laughs> do a lot of things. Yeah, good. So maybe you could touch on something you've, you've done oh. over the years. Okay. Well, I knew, I mean, it's like I've written shows, and always the shows are the same thing. They're always about my life. You know, I'm so sick of my life, but that seems to be only what I talk about lately. But I always knew that I would be an actor. Uh, I was uh, I was uh, born in the 40s, where radio was the the entertainment uh, du jour, and they had the best entertainment in the world on the radio. All the actors on the radio were from Hollywood, and uh, the Hollywood movies and and uh, all the shows were entertaining. Not like today on the radio, it's crap. Except for your show uh -huh. and what my show was. That uh -huh. was different. Yes, your show was <laughs> the Lunch and Judy show. Actually, it started out. It still is. Right? Well, I kind of burned out. I burned myself out because I was. Ma I made a mistake with that show. I th I th envisioned an hour show, oh. but I produced it alone, which meant write the copy myself, edit it myself, do the interviews and edit them myself, add skits which I wrote and acted different parts and edited myself. So I worked the whole week for that hour show. Yes. And I did it for seven years. I started out with a radio chat with Judy Stat, right. and then went to the Lunch and Judy show, and I don't know why. It just sounded good yes. to me. Um, anyway, so I, I did that for a very long time. I've been an actor for over 60 years. Uh, oh. <laughs> It's a long time, and I've I've been in and now it's almost ninety plays that I've been in my whole life. You know, it's amazing. It is amazing. Yes, and initially, you came on my program <laughs> because my program was about disabilities, and over the years, you did a lot of work with the elderly. Oh yes, playing. playing at different homes and... Alzheimer's units and yes. facilities, yeah. I found that very difficult to do after a while. Um, I would go back every week, every month, or wherever, however often they would ask me back to the same places, and I did, I did hundreds of them. And you would see the progression of people who, when I first started going there, were had their wits about them, and right. then gradually disintegrated, and it was very, very sad to watch. 
And, uh, and physically I found it difficult because I was carrying all kinds of sound equipment and things. But um, it was rewarding for a, for a long time. And yes. they knew every lyric uh -huh. to the music. Yeah. They didn't know who their names, they didn't know their, you know. When I left, they said, when are you coming? Right. Went back? No. Are you, what, are you doing something now? I said, I just did it. Oh. Yeah. But, uh, but they know every single lyric. So uh, it's, it's amazing to me that the medical community doesn't understand that music plays a very big part exactly. in their That's therapy. Right. Yes. But the medical community is not too bright. No. Not to me. I don't think so. Yes, you brought up that the elderly, they caught on with the lyrics. They knew every one. And every I, word. I imagine work with Alzheimer's yes. and all that. The um, medication treatment that has improved. I don't know. You don't. I don't know. I don't hold up much store for doctors and for drug companies and for uh, the drug companies who only really make things to. They only want to make money. They want to keep you in buying their stuff. True. They don't want you to get better. That's right. Yeah. You, you get better, they, they lost the customer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. So I don't have much respect for them. Well, so there. one guy, Glenn Campbell. Yes. Who had Alzheimer's. He passed. Yeah. He had an ama amazing career. Yes, he did. And one of his last songs was about his Alzheimer's. Mm. That was an amazing song. His daughter took him around to yes. all the different tours You're and right. how lucky he was to have a lovely uh, daughter like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. Very nice. Uh, definitely was. Yeah. Is. And I believe that some people out there are similar in nature. Sure. Yes. Mm. So I spent so many years acting. Um, and then, as I got older, the parts became less. So uh, when you're addicted to the stage, as I am, and I'm very addicted to being on stage, yes. I wrote my own place. So my writing was improving, and I won grants and, and prizes for my yes. plays. And Maybe you could tell us about your new coming play. Yeah, well, actually, I'm doing a new show now uh, in Nyack at Maureen's Jazz Cellar. Yes. which I was so happy to find. Um, I've been going there almost a, a year and a half. I think it's almost as old as they are. They're kind of kind of new. Yes. And it's uh, the name Maureen uh, is after David Budway and Brianne Higgins' uh, sister, who died from breast cancer several years ago. So they built this beautiful jazz place yes. in honor of her. She was a fabulous singer. And wow. oh yeah! As a matter of fact, after she died, she was given. Uh, I think she won a very prestigious award from Downbeat Magazine as one of the top singers. Oh, fantastic! It is. So I'm very honored to be doing my show there. Oh, you're not seeing there. I am. You're I'm doing, doing my show, show there. Doing an actual show. An actual show. It's. Uh, tell us about yeah, it is. Zoom in. A, let me. I should read what I wrote here. Having been in a character actress for years, my theatrical style and heartfelt interpretations of jazz, Broadway, and popular tunes have been embraced by audiences in cabaret and nightclubs throughout the New York area for many, many, many years, centuries maybe even. I mean, I have a strong, very expressive voice and my joy in entertaining. It's obvious, come on. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? You got it, you got it. It's no drama. No, it's singing. Oh, is it? And I remember working for a theater, and the director of the theater company said, Judy, you're such a good actress. Why would you want to sing? And I thought to myself, oh, you mean I'm not a good singer? That means I stink? Oh. I'm no good? And I had like a, a complex about singing for years. I was afraid to sing. Yeah. And then I went to a club, and this lovely singer that was there, Judy Cantorino, I told her about it, and she said, get up here. Oh. And I yes. sang with, um, with um, oh God, Pizzarelli. What's his name? Bucky Pizzarelli, uh, from the guitar. He's a famous, right. famous jazz guitarist. Uh, and uh, I think I was afraid of 
forgetting lyrics and and everything else, you know, just just not being prepared because that's my modus operandi is I'm like you, I wing things. Oh. I'm a, re- a wing nut. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, wing yeah. nuts, right. Hey. Yes. So um, from then on, I've been singing. And now I don't care if I forget lyrics. I just make up new lyrics. And it's it great. Works. Yeah, it does. Yes. And I've also found out that I'm an artist, which is amazing. In what way do you mean artist? I, um, I've always drawn cartoons on my computer. Yes. And, and that explains. Yes, that's the, yeah, I drew that. You came up with the icon. Yes. Which icon? Oh the oh the, the 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 face, yeah. And this is this is so this is what I do now. So uh, because of that, I've been experimenting with all <laughs> all kinds of stuff, and I make these beautiful pillows that I didn't bring one even to show you, which is really clever. Um, and uh, the the pillows are very unusual because they have faces on them, and a lot of the faces are kind of sad faces. Oh. And I think because basically, even though I come across as this happy person, when you talk about uh, yes. disabilities, I was yes. I was telling telling you before, I, I I've, I'm verified now. <laughs> yes. I uh, I've been given a diagnosis, so I am a formally uh, diagnosed as high functioning depressive disorder person. Yes. That's so I seem like ha, ah! and then I go home and oh, so it is. Oh yeah. DSM. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But you embrace it. Of course. What am I going to do? Yeah. <laughs> it's nice, though, to get it. It's nice. It's interesting because yes. I knew I was had this problem my entire life when, when I was a kid. I had a very, some people would call it a tumultuous childhood, but uh, I was a very neglected kid. But uh, I knew that I always had problems. Uh, but to then get a diagnosis, it was a relief, actually. Yes. <laughs> like, That's... Nothing to, you know, I mean, you make fun of it, but a lot of people, you know, it's serious. Yeah, well, he said it's a very serious mental illness, and I thought to myself, well, my sister, when I was six, she she was diagnosed with, um, at that time, years ago, all they knew was schizophrenia, I think, and they put her into Rockland State Hospital, dragged her out of the house, and lobotomized her the next week, so I had that in my history, you know, when I was a kid. So I thought there was always always something there lurking. And um, no, of course it's not funny. Uh, but I've always tried to overcome anything by humor. Right. What would you say to people who don't think it's funny or don't find it funny and they are diagnosed as mentally ill mm-hmm. and they can't laugh about it. They can't make light of it. Well, I don't know if there's anything to say about that. I mean, if that's if that's part of their treatment, if that's how they feel about it. I mean, I worked very hard to learn about it. I, I went on YouTube as my god and Google and learned as much as I could about the illness And not so much what caused it, because there's no cure for it, but I was very into finding out how it manifested itself and what I could do. There is no cure, so what could I do to ease the symptoms? And there are many, many things which no one talks about. They want to give you antidepressants? Yes. Uh -uh. You can change your diet. You can eat less red, don't don't eat any red meat. I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables, healthy food. I bought a sun lamp, a, a therapeutic sun lamp, not the one that you get tanned with. Right. It's, uh, it duplicates the sunlight, which, right. excuse me, reduces the symptoms of depression. Oh, it does. And I do that while I'm on the treadmill for 15 minutes, which also is a magic pill against depression. Right. So I use the sun lamp, I use the, the uh, treadmill while I'm listening to a wonderful audio book. So I'm exercising everything. Yes, I'm just incredible. So I work very hard at it. And uh, and I take vitamins and and I write poetry and I write different stuff and music and I sing. Mm. I do the things I love to do. And that's what I would tell them to do. Excellent. Do the things I love to do. Yes, so there's no 
one answer for no. anything. Everybody's different. Yes. That's why you can't, how do you give medic- medicine to, uh, there's 50 billion, they're all, everybody's different. How do you give the same medicine to everybody? True. First of all, the medicine was designed for men. You know that all medicines were designed for men? I didn't. Yeah, the stupid women don't. They, they, it's just recently. Yeah, explain. They, yeah, they do, They uh, use men's body weight, their physiognomy, and they design medications that work with the male body. But females have a whole different internal system. That's different fact. organs. Fact. Fact. Yep. And how do you? That's. It's amazing, isn't it? It's, yeah, it's unbelievable. I know. I, yes. That's why I don't really have much faith in drug companies and pharmaceutical right. companies. Yes. They're into money. It's money, 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 money. True. Me, I'm not into money. That's why I have no money. Oh. <laughs> then you shouldn't be into it. Right? I don't know. I don't yes. know. Yeah, you had touched about your poetry. Mm-hmm. I'd love to hear maybe one or two of them. Of your lovely poems. Oh, I don't know if they're lovely, but... Yeah, maybe. Oh, I want your poems. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I really... I was thinking of recording them and making a CD or something. That would be I great. have to figure out a way to try to make a few bucks. Maybe it's a good way to start. Well, maybe we'll see. This will yeah. be my virgin voyage here. Oh, exactly. All right, let's see. This is the journey to old. The journey can be fun on the way to old, but now I can be bold to repeat what I've been told, that when they made me, they broke the mold. My talents, they say, are worth their weight in gold. So tales of my stagecraft are no longer told. So what? Nobody's arms will reach for me to enfold. Steamy memories my mind does still hold, but I'll not let myself be cajoled. No, no more in the hay will I ever be rolled. Always hated heat, now I'm always cold. And of my memoir, you ask? Oh, that story's been sold. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's excellent. Thank you. What's the title of that one? That one is called Journey to Old. Excellent. Thank you. And uh, you heard it here first. Yes, first, first. Yes. You heard it here first. Yeah. I don't know where they come from. A lot of the times when I get depressed, um, I run to the computer and just write my feelings down, and and it seems it comes out in rhyme. Also, I've noticed there are oh. several people who they have that that talent, you know. Yes. I like that. That's fabulous. I like rhyming. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You have a few more there. Sure. Maybe we one more. We read one more. And we'll talk a little. Okay. Then go back. Okay. Uh, Thank you. So go for it. Okay. This one's called Don't Drop the Ball. If there is something that you value and you know what that is, keep your eyes on the prize. But remember, above all, no matter how high the stakes, you must do what it takes and you cannot drop the ball. How high your goal is doesn't matter. Keep on climbing up that ladder and don't be afraid to fall because above all, remember that you cannot drop the ball. Tell everyone you know that you have seeds you must sow. You have no choice but to use your voice. You cannot drop the ball. Let the words come out strong. There is no right or wrong. Don't be afraid. Life will come to your aid. And remember, above all, you must never, no, never, never, ever drop that ball. (laughs) <laughs> wow! It seems like you really get a huge. <clears throat> yeah, writing. and I'm mad because I dropped the ball several times in my life, and I yes. I could have been a contender, but I dropped the ball, so it makes me mad. But you wouldn't be here. Right? No, I wouldn't be with you on the show. Yes. <laughs> we all have what ifs. Yeah. Yeah. What's your what if? Hmm. Um. I I think about what if, what if I didn't have my accident? What yeah, if yeah. I didn't do what, whatever. But I did, and what? Uh, this is what if. The show became out of what if. Our life. Yeah, right. And this is your life. Yeah, and it's a good make every day we. We invent ourselves. Yeah. You know, and yeah. That's it. 
<laughs> yeah, so <laughs> your friends over the years mm -hmm. today, I imagine you've lost friends, gained friends, lost. I don't friends. even consider myself really, I don't have any trust of anyone. Uh, I think that comes from being in a, in a neglected child. Um, you, I never really trusted adults when I was a kid, and it remained with me, that feeling of mistrust and not really having the faith to count on anybody. And if, if it comes through that people do really, you know, do uh, um, support me, I'm surprised. I'm never, I'm never, I never take it for granted. I'm always, I'm always surprised at that. And that's kind of, it's not that it's sad, but it's, it's just not, it doesn't work for me. I don't, yes. yeah. Other people have friends that are loyal and stay with them. I don't, I don't know what that is. So you have, you have friends that come in and go out yeah. after life. Yeah. But that's okay? For me, it works that better that way. Yes. I think it, as they get to know me, that's, they begin to say, Ugh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then they leave. And then I get new ones, and then they're fun, and then, and then they go, Ugh. and then uh -huh. they leave. <laughs> I think that's what has to happen. Yes. I don't know what it is. So over the years, you've been married, right? I was married once for 16 years. I got married at 16 and had three kids by the time I was 23. Wow. And I married the wrong person. It is ridiculous even to say the words because I never it never should have happened. But uh, I divorced him, and I've been divorced for over 40 years happily. Yes. I'll never get married again. That's crazy. Yes. I don't believe in it. Um, so I live alone with my dogs. I got yeah. two chihuahuas that love to crap all over the house. They, oh, uh, right. That's all they do. Mm. Me and wee-wee pants. I have wee-wee pants everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you had said you grew up or lived in the city? In the Bronx. Yes. Yeah, most of my life was in the Bronx. And how long in the Bronx. You, yes, Bronx girl. Yeah. And how long have you been here? Up here, uh, I when I got divorced, it was 1972. So I've been up here in Rockland County ever since <coughs> that time. Yes. And I, when I came up here, I joined Elmwood Playhouse. Yes. And I did several plays there. And then there was another theater opening up and that was a full-time theater. And I, a summer theater, rather. And I joined them, and I stayed with that theater company for 30 years and did 39 plays there. Wow. And I was very lucky. Because, you you know, though, and I used to resent the fact that I'm not an actress in the city. But I would have never had that opportunity to do all different characters in, uh, sure. in the city. Nah. So, like you say, you know, things happen, and it's for the best, whatever. Yes. So, moving on. Yeah. Is a huge thing for everyone. Sure. But not many people can do it. Mm -hmm. I think it's because they don't have a goal or a, a prize to keep their eyes on. And I, I've always had that. I've always known that that's what I I'm an entertainer. That's what I do. That's yeah. who I am. And you've, I imagine you've had periods where things slow down. Sure. And you had to change your direction. No, I never changed direction. Even uh, even when I had the art, uh, I was always writing things for myself to act. Yes. And then I had the art. But everything I did was called creative endeavor. It was never, I never went into another direction. It was always something that was creative, even if it was cooking. I love cooking unique recipes and 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 baking. I bake and, and do all kinds of things. Anything that's anything great. that's creative. Yeah, I that's love that. Awesome. Somebody said my house looks like a painting. That I'm living in a painting because oh. everything around me is yes. is pretty, pretty. Super. Yeah. So, have you been doing the the joke thing lately? <laughs> uh, you I'm always sure. think of me that way, which is kind of funny to me, and I love it. But I'm and people when I even when I'm singing in Maureen's Maureen's Jazz Cellar, mm -hmm. they say to to me, Judy, you know, you're not you're a singer, but you're a stand up right. comic. And but I just don't have the right material. I just I write, but I don't. I listen to George Carlin all the time. He's my favorite. 
listen to George Carlin, listen to all of the comedians. I can't think of the, the one that I just re- recently listened to that I love him, I love him, I love him. He's the one that gave up that show. It was millions of dollars, and he gave it up. Eh. No. Chappelle. Chappelle. Dave Chappelle. Dave? Dave Chappelle. I love yes. Dave Chappelle. Because he talks about real life. It's not bull, you know? It's not baloney. It's like real real living. And it's funny. So yes. I'm, I'm getting closer to maybe writing some kind of a routine. Yeah, I have to announce we have an audience of one. Maybe would you introduce everyone to our audience? Yes. I would love to introduce to you downtown Lillian Brown, who is a fantastic singer, extraordinaire. Yes. And I'm very proud to be with her. And we talk about techniques all the time. And we may be working on our own podcast very shortly. Oh, um, because we have very similar interests and, uh, and likes. And she's a highly intelligent and lovely woman. So uh, I'm very lucky to have met her. Yes. And we're having, we're having a good time. Hello, Lillian Brown. Hello. Hey! Yeah. <laughs> Lillian Brown. Woo! Yeah, remember that name? That's right. Remember Lillian that name. Lillian Brown. <laughs> B-R-O-W-N. <laughs> yes. Yes, so, Judy, I'm, I remember the first time you were on my show, I said, So, Judy, <laughs> make, make us laugh. And... Comedians don't like that. Well, it's because I'm really not a comedian. Yeah. But I think, yeah, because they. It, it's one thing when you're working on an act, you know your jokes, you have your jokes. Yes. Like I sent to you in the thing here, I was listening to Mae West and watching her story. And when she said, did you know sex was a misdemeanor? I sent you that one. You did. Because the more you miss it, the meaner you get. Uh-huh. So I thought that was kind of cute. Yeah. <laughs> I said that to my son, and he, he was like, eh. Yeah. Really? Eh. How old are your kids? Oh, my kids. My baby is 51. Yeah. <laughs> what? 51. 51. How old are you? You could be my son, right? Look at her. Yeah. She's rude. Well, I can tell you how old I am. I don't care. What's the difference? Uh, are you going to change anything? Yeah, doesn't change anything. Exactly. Five five baby. Okay, so my middle son is five five baby. Oh. And the older one is five seven baby. Oh. How is this? In three years that baby's gonna be sixty. Oh. My kid is gonna be sixty years old. That I I can't deal with that. I can't deal with that. Yeah, I remember. My, my brother, <laughs> That's too much. My brother once wrote a, a letter and he said, You've become the speed limit. 55. Okay. <laughs> right, that right, was right. Way back then. <laughs> right? Way back. Yeah. That was been 70s, right? That was my dad. Okay. Became the speed limit. Yeah. And you thought, boy, that'll never happen to me, right? right? Exactly. Never. Well, if you're lucky, it does. Oh, yes. And we're moving on. That's right. Because what yes. else can you do? Yeah, I just realized. Time flew right by. Yes. And we're about to end. Get out of here. Oh, we are. That's amazing. And maybe you'd like to tell us an ending story? Well, I, I could tell you the ending. I don't know if I mentioned when my show is going to be, which is, oh. uh, it's Judy Stat yes. uh, in uh, Words and Music. And uh, I've, I'm doing some original tunes by some wonderful writers that have written shows for me. I mean, that's one of the things you get when you're old. Is that a lot of people have seen me, and a lot of people liked me. Yes. I didn't say they're my friend, eh, but they liked me, and they were they were interested in writing shows about me. So I've had several shows written and musicals. Wow. So I have a, a tunes from this one, a tune from that one, a tune from that one, and mix it in with some really gorgeous, gorgeous music. And I'm trying to put it together in some kind of order and make a story out of it, you know. So it's, And that's going to be at Maureen's Jazz Cellar in Nyack, New York. But you have to call for a reservation. You can't just walk in. Small. It's 845-535-3143. And the dates. The date. Oh, you want the date? States. Wednesday. Right now it's only one date. 
But I think it's going to sell out, so I'll get another date. Yes. It's Wednesday, June 13th, 13th, at uh, 8 o'clock. At 8 o'clock. Saturday? Wednesday. Wednesday, not Friday. I didn't live up to Saturday. But I'm telling Friday. you, just to <laughs> tell you, <laughs> right, right, that, which is a lucky day, by the way. Uh, yes. Hubert Laws is going to be there in two days after me. So I must have arrived in some way. Yes. I'm in the same week as Hubert Laws. Hey, that's pretty good. That should be against the law. Right. Okay. Yes. So that's awesome. Yeah. You want me to leave you with a poem? Oh, uh, yeah. Or is there no time for that? Well, we there is time? For one last one. One last one. Okay. All right. Yes. It's called Love Many, Trust a Few, and Learn to Paddle Your Own Canoe. Which is what I've been talking about the whole time. Yes. You say you want to know the secret to happiness. Well, it's easy. I tell you true. Just love yourself through and through, and only then can you trust a few. Yes, share yourself with only the best. Before you know it, you'll see through the rest. Here's the clue. Love yourself. Trust a few and learn to paddle your own canoe. You say you're sick and tired of living on your own and you want to share your life instead of living alone? You're trying too hard? Give it a rest. Stop looking for life that's filled with zest. Be yourself. Yeah, I mean, be you. Just love yourself. Trust only a few and learn to paddle your own canoe. I know you think there's some big scheme, some hidden plan or another to help you find your dream lover. Well, this is no scam. You already have someone inside who will stay by your side forever and ever. And this is no chide. So stop and listen to the secret of happiness. It's real and it's true. Oh, I know. It's so easy to do. Simply, love yourself, trust only a few, and learn to paddle your own damn canoe. Uh -huh. Fabulous. Excellent. Thank you. Um, thank you, yes, Dan. Judy Stutt, thank Dan you, Wyndham. And <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. Yeah. Peace. Peace, which is hard to do with Trump. But we're working on it. Work on it. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous. Thank you.